it's a very satisfying thing to go out and find a tree and actually convert it into a piece of furniture. It's both satisfying and economic in that the timber of one tree will make many pieces of furniture, will satisfy my requirements in that particular wood for, for some considerable time. One gets the rough, heavy work to start with, which is quite tiring and backbreaking, and also you get the the enjoyment and pleasure from doing the, the finer work towards the end. I had a, a, a formal training in cotton textiles originally. I then worked in wool and man-made fibre textiles and some years ago in 1972 I left textiles and had to look for another job. I thought of going into one or two other r related jobs such as small-scale wool weaving but realised that I, I had some small asset in that I'd been furniture making as an amateur all my life right from the, the first egg rack at school I'd kept the interest going so I, I thought I had a, some small talent worth developing it wasn't too much of a gamble because initially I didn't make a, a big capital outlay fortunately we'd, we'd just built a, an extension on the house which was going to be bedroom space but I was able to make this into full-time uh, workshop space quite easily. Somebody will come and see me in the workshop and give me their requirements, say for a, a table, how many people they want to sit at it, what sort of wood they feel they would like it to be made of and what sort of a room it has to go in. Those are somebody's requirements. From that, I make up a design. Not all folk like the sort of design I'm doing. And to uh, try and answer this problem early on in the, uh, in the inquiry, I have a book of photographs of my work, which the inquirer can see. And if they don't like it, they're encouraged to say so as soon as possible. I like to think they're original designs, but they're not entirely original in that they're not just uh, plucked from the sky or from my heart. They're influenced by other furniture that I've seen, other cabinet makers from the past. Working at home is a bit narrow or limiting in the sense that the daily routine is all within four walls and this can become a bit claustrophobic. From time to time I need to get out. I do miss the stimulation that comes from working with other people and uh, you have to compensate for this in some way. I think I do find it uh, a little inspiration from living around here because although it's almost part of the Manchester conurbation, uh, it's right on the edge and it is very peaceful and, and that in itself I think um, contributes. I didn't learn cabinet making in, in any one area. I, I'm self-taught. I don't 
altogether revel in being self-taught. I do sometimes wish I'd had a, a formal training in uh, furniture making. Wood itself is a very beautiful raw material in its natural state, unlike other craftsmen's materials like clay or, or metals. The basic raw material in, in furniture making is something of beauty in itself, and therefore I, I do feel that it's up to me as a furniture maker to just handle and use that latent beauty in the timber and not to clutter it up with uh, over-decoration. I was glad that when I started making uh, furniture, I did have the considerable organisational and office and sales experience, which I gained in textiles behind me, because I could leave that comfortably on, on one side and say that, for the moment anyway, I knew enough about that, and I can just concentrate on, on the wood and tool side of, of the work. At the moment, the range of furniture that I make is really centred on smaller cabinets, tables and chairs. This is really a wood turner's chair and the designer doesn't come into it very much. The way of making it decides its appearance. Although it's been made for centuries, I think it's still very modern looking in that it's light and strong and of a very pleasant natural appearance. When I was in textiles, one got the illusion of security working for a large firm. Since I left, I found, I, I, I realised it, it was an illusion because I feel one is more secure relying on your own skills and hands to do one's own work rather than relying on the whims of senior management in large multinational companies. I do find it a very satisfying sort of chair to make uh, because it's just simple and, uh, and straightforward. It just requires a certain amount of patience and accuracy. And also the seating is a, is a satisfying part. The, the rushes are very uh, nice to handle, leave a, a pleasant oiliness on your hands. And it's enjoyable work to do. I don't think I ever feel like giving up furniture making or, or doing something else. I suppose, in some way, it's self-stimulating. There's such a, a deep scope in furniture making, trying to get the best out of the materials and trying to make something that looks right and is, at the same time, fit for its purpose. I don't think I would consider going back into industry. There are too many pleasant advantages of working for yourself, um, provided you can just make a living. <laughs>